the vast majority of Americans who are transitioning into retirement in the U.S. today rely on Social Security to produce at least a portion of their retirement income. But it's a complex system. There are thousands and thousands of rules. People make filing mistakes all the time. We talk to a lot of people who have made mistakes that they regret and wish that they could reverse. So in today's video, we're going to cover the top five mistakes you need to make sure you avoid when you file for your own benefits. The first mistake we see people make when they file for their own benefits is failing to check and verify their earnings history that the Social Security Administration has record of. As you probably know, the amount of benefit that you're going to get from Social Security depends on how much money you paid into the system during your career. It's based on the average 35 years of indexed earnings history, meaning adjusted for inflation. Now, the Social Security Administration is this big government organization, right? And they check and they double check your W-2 information and they just know and calculate automatically what you've made and what your benefits are going to be, right? Well, that's true in theory, but the Social Security Administration, I am sorry to inform you, is underfunded and performing pretty poorly. So it is very, very important to review your earnings statement that Social Security gives you and verify it against your own records. Better yet, if you're someone who's thinking about filing way down the road, you're still in the middle of your career, every few years, just pull your Social Security earnings statement and verify it against the amount of money that you made. Because I can guarantee you that your employer over your career took money out of your paycheck, if you're in eligible coverage and paid into the system, your employer is taking money out of your paycheck and giving it to the Social Security Administration. So you might as well verify that you got credit for those payments because all too often we see mistakes that the Social Security Administration sometimes finds. Mostly it's the beneficiary or you, the consumer who paid into the system, uh, who needs to find the mistakes, notify the Social Security Administration, and, and they will then fix them to increase your benefits before you go ahead and file. The second mistake we see people make over and over and over again is filing for Social Security benefits before they have 35 years of work history. If you've worked for 20 years and you're wondering about your Social Security benefits, so you call the office, you pull your statement, and you say, oh, Holy smokes, I'm eligible to collect benefits. I'd love to do so and just go ahead and file. Well, you're absolutely free to do so. And if you really know what you're doing and have run all these numbers already, this may not necessarily be a mistake. But here's why it's a mistake for most people. Your benefit is based, as we were talking about a moment ago, on your highest 35 years of earnings that you paid into the system. So if you only have 20 years of work history for paying into the Social Security system, that doesn't mean that they're taking the average 20 years of history that you have. They're still taking the average 35 years, and you just happen to have 15 years of zeros included. So what this means for most people is if you're thinking about filing your benefits, just understand what you're getting into. And even if you work maybe a quarter time or two days a week before you file for benefits, replacing some of those years of zeros with a positive number will dramatically bump up your benefit that you get every single month for the rest of your life once you do file for benefits. Third biggest mistake that we see is people who continue to work while filing for benefits before their full retirement age. As you probably know, the amount of benefits that you get Yes, it's dependent on your earnings history, but it also depends on when you file. The way that the benefit is calculated is they take your average 35 years of inflation index adjusted earnings and they apply this calculation. And that calculation spits out what your primary insurance amount, PIA, is going to be if you file for benefits at your full retirement age. Right now, full retirement age for people is between age 66 and 67. And if you file for benefits before your full retirement age, they reduce the amount of your check permanently. If you file after, they increase the amount permanently all the way up until you're age 70. Now, if you file for benefits before full retirement age and you continue to work, the Social Security Administration will actually haircut your benefits further. And the whole philosophy here is they set a, retire a national retirement age 
and they feel like if you're still working and you're filing for benefits before that age, they shouldn't need to give you all that money all, all up front. The way that this works is if you make any more in 2024, the number is $22,320. So if you file for benefits before full retirement age and you make more than $22,320 in earned income, the Social Security Administration is going to reduce your Social Security benefits by $1 for every $2 that you earn in that year. You need to know about this before you decide to file for benefits. Now, it might still be the best path for you to do that. And keep in mind here that this money doesn't disappear forever. Once you hit full retirement age, the Social Security gives it all right back to you. So it's not gone forever. But their argument is that if you're bef- earlier than your full retirement age and you're still working, you should have no reason or need to file for Social Security benefits. And if and when you do, they're going to haircut your benefits and capture additional depending on your income. So just know about that before you file because you may as well just wait until closer to full retirement age in the first place if you don't need all the money and allow your benefit to go up and up and up and up for every month that you defer closer to your full retirement age. Number four mistake that we see over and over and over again in our financial planning practice is not independently verifying your benefit number. Let's say that you've been someone who's worked a full career, you're entitled to social security benefits, your plan is to file at your full retirement age, which is age 67. So you get all your ducks in a row, you uh, file the paperwork and you start collecting checks at age 67. Well, most people's experience with this is that Social Security is complex. It's kind of confusing. I'm filling out the paperwork. I hand it to the Social Security representative. They process it, and then I start getting a check, right? Well, unfortunately, the Social Security Administration tends to make mistakes all the time. And it's not just a situation where you need to make sure that we're getting every penny that we're entitled to, which we do, right? So if you're entitled to $3,500 in monthly benefits, we want to make sure that you're getting that amount when the Social Security Administration pays you. The other risk here is that they overcalculate your benefits. And you're, if you're entitled to $3,500 a month, it's not that uncommon that they might make an error internally and send you a check for $3,800 a month. Well, now we might always, we might think, well, that's their problem, right? They made the mistake, that's on them. What we're coming to find out here is that when the Social Security Administration realizes that they've made such a mistake, they send a love letter to you and demand all the money back. And if you don't pay them back, they'll garnish your future Social Security checks that you may or may not be living off of. So this is a big problem that the Social Security Administration has right now. It's underfunded. They have all sorts of problems with uh, the representation of the organization. And what we need to do when we file for benefits is independently verify that the calculation is correct. There are a number of software um, uh, packages out there that you can access to run these numbers on your own. You can always hire a professional to do it uh, with you or for you. The purpose is just make sure that you're getting an accurate read on what your benefits should be, because if your checks are different than that, then it's probably something you need to look into. Mistake number five has to do with filing for benefits based on your spouse's earnings record. What a lot of people know is that if you don't have any earnings history where you've paid into the Social Security system, you're you're not eligible to collect benefits based on your own earnings record. But if you've been married for a short time to your spouse, you can collect benefits based on your spouse's record, which is up to 50% of their primary insurance amount. It's pretty nice, right? What a lot of people fail to realize is that you can do the exact same thing for an ex-spouse's record. If you were married to somebody for at least 10 years and you're now divorced, you've not been remarried, you can file for Social Security benefits based on their earnings record as soon as age 62. They don't even have to have filed yet. They can still be waiting for their benefit to increase, and you can still collect on their earnings record. It has nothing to do with your ex-spouse. 
You don't have to coordinate with them. They don't have to sign anything. It's directly with the Social Security Administration. This is something that a lot of people just overlook and fail to receive the benefits that they're entitled to. And on top of that, there might be some gamesmanship to be had between filing based on your ex-spouse's record and your own, or own earnings record, too. You could theoretically file for spousal benefits, again, as long as you're 62, you haven't remarried, and you were married um, to your ex-spouse for at least 10 years and have since divorced, you can file based on their benefit and allow your own to increase until you get closer to full retirement age in the future. There's a lot of opportunity out there, but it takes a little bit of strategy and forethought. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button at the bottom of the screen and subscribe to the channel to make sure that you're notified anytime we come out with something new. And on top of that, if you're not sure whether you're on track financially, you might want to check out our free wealth gauge assessment. There's a link for it in the comments. Basically, you click the link, you take three minutes to fill out some basic financial information about yourself. We take that information and run it through our financial planning software. Then we send you via email a short private video of our findings and 30,000 foot observations.